If you like audiobooks or audio shows, check out a free trial of Audible. Just click the link in the description. Welcome to Mind Shock True Crime. This is your host, Bruce McGuire. I'm going to discuss what I would call a phenomenon, even though it's not really a phenomenon. That is innocent psychos. Innocent scumbags. Just innocent human garbage that are innocent of what they are accused and why it's dangerous to emotionally respond and become married to these character assassinations and correlating them directly with crimes that these individuals are accused of. And this is something you see in the true crime sphere all the time. I mean, even even hardened aficionados with uh, many years or even decades of studying criminology and true crime cases, they still fall for this, where they're indicting and condemning in the court of public opinion, so to speak, based on certain character traits, which even if true, do not prove the guilt of someone, which is why I think the standard of beyond a reasonable doubt is, is a pretty good standard. It means pretty much for damn sure. Not possibly. Not even probable. Pro not even probably. Not even high probability. Beyond any kind of reasonable doubt. So that means for sure, as sure as can be. Obviously, you know, it might not be 100%, but, you know, 99.999%. Basically, for, for all intents and purposes, beyond any kind of, of doubting. So reasonable doubting, of course. You're not going to inject uh, human clones and uh, alien manipulations and interdimensional travelers. That That's obviously people would agree that that's not necessarily reasonable unless, of course, there's definitive evidence of that. So if you're just going to speculate on that and then depend a court trial to account for that, that would not be a reason. That would not be reasonable. So these doubts have to be reasonable, but pretty much for sure. So we'll be getting into that. As always, if you enjoy the podcast, you could donate to our PayPal. Just check the link in the description. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Make sure you allow your device to have those notifications come through. If that's still not working, you could just go to youtube.com slash mindshock and manually peruse our ever-expanding back catalog, as well as check out the latest podcasts as they are released. If you like this podcast and find it informative, hit that like button, share it across social media platforms. Let's increase the use of logic and reason in the, in the common population. Questions, comments, theories, thoughts, suggestions, rebuttals, or debunkings of any kind, leave them in the comment section. You can also check us out on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and Patreon. Patrons do get priority for case topic logical analysis, co podcaster requests, and help support the channel to help us release more mind shocking podcasts in a variety of topics from true crime to the paranormal to conspiracy theories and coincidence theories alike, and anything and everything in between, as always, with logic and reason at the forefront remaining objective neutral and scientific without falling for logical fallacies unlike any other podcast out there all right so how many times have we seen character assassinations and everybody instantly thinks that an, an individual is guilty now this is why controls are important in any any kind of scientific analysis because if you're going to say, okay, this individual is guilty, I just covered Amanda Knox. If you haven't checked out the Amanda Knox podcast, check that out. And also Scott Peterson, check that podcast out. So let's say the analysis is correct. Just assume. Let's just assume for the sake of argument these people are pathological liars, psychopaths, sociopaths, the scum of the earth. Let's assume that's true. Obviously, I'm not saying that's true. Obviously, the evidence might not be there to suggest that that's true, but let's just assume for the sake of argument. Why would that mean they can't be innocent? How many, again, let's compare, how many psychopaths, sociopaths, pathological liars and narcissists, how many of these people are walking around that don't kill people or are responsible for these heinous crimes in some of these famed true crime cases? A lot. So it seems really silly to indict them on their character. Character assassination, 
again, I'm not going to say it's not valid. You have to, you look at all available information, all available evidence. That can be evidence against them. But if that's all you have, that's a major problem. That's why, again, the legal standard in the United States, at least, is beyond a reasonable doubt. Beyond, not within an approximate doubt. It's beyond. It's very clear. Beyond. Beyond. Not approximate. So that's why you have to let physical evidence dictate these verdicts because there are plenty of scumbags out there that don't commit crimes they're accused of. They might have committed a whole bunch of other crimes. They might have even killed other people. But here's the danger. Some people say, oh, well, who cares? They killed this other person. They should be in jail. Yes. If it's proven that they killed the other person, they should be in jail. However, you, there's another person out there that killed somebody who is not in jail because of this individual and this particular result. That's why these kind of this fallacious reasoning in deviating from beyond a reasonable doubt or these legal standards is so dangerous because you have so many guilty people out there. Think about it. The the nice guy down the street that nobody that nobody suspected the nice guy or gal down the street nobody suspected they're they're walking around laughing at how silly at how silly the idiot box watching public is where they think they got the guy the the influence on the juries they think they got the guy again in the case of scott peterson let's say for the sake of argument again i'm not saying scott peterson is innocent this is Mindshock, where the only thing we know for sure is that we don't know anything for sure. If you haven't checked out the Mindshock spot, Scott Peterson podcast, make sure to check it out because there are some stunning, mind-shocking coincidences of other victims washing up ashore, missing limbs. There's just there's a lot of issues and coincidences that nobody talks about in the Scott Peterson case, the sighting specifically of Lacey Peterson by her neighbors. I mean, it's a little bit silly to mistake somebody who's your actual neighbor. It's not like she went to some crowded mall and people sighted her. This is a different situation. This is let's not fall for these false dichotomies and straw man logical fallacies. Someone who you are clearly familiar with and you see on a fairly often basis, obviously you're going to be less likely to mistake them. That doesn't mean you can't mistake them. Obviously, it's a theoretical possibility they could, they could be mistaken. But when you're talking about multiple individuals citing her after the time that she's allegedly dead, that's a problem. Now, if Scott Peterson is this uh, narcissistic, psychopath, sociopath, scum of the earth type individual, how hard is the true perpetrator laughing at everybody falling for it? Because if Scott Peterson is innocent, again, I'm not saying he is, but if he is, and the point of this podcast isn't specific cases. It's not about Amanda Knox or Scott Peterson. It's about, in general, the character assassinate. The character assassinations that take place in the court of public opinion and how that influences juries because and just even basic human psychology, because if you're on a jury and you feel that a particular individual is lying about everything, which they might be, they might be a complete psychopath, they might be enjoying and relishing the attention, they might be happy that the victim is dead. They might be because if they're a terrible person. And they're happy. They wanted that person to die. They would never do it themselves because they're either too cowardly or they just never would. They were too, basically, for whatever reason, they just wouldn't do it or they didn't think they could get away with it, whatever the case may be. And if this person who they actually want dead or that maybe they didn't specifically want them dead, but now that they're dead, they're happy that they're dead, they're going to behave in a certain manner. If you use that as evidence against them committing a crime instead of actual physical evidence, instead of using logic and reason to meet the standard of beyond a reasonable doubt, that's doing a great disservice to the victims because not only – is it opening the door for many more wrongful convictions, false convictions, which are, again, the, the amount that have been discovered is just absolutely mind shocking. Obviously, one is too many. But based on current numbers, it could be anywhere between 3 and 40% of people in prison that are innocent. 
Obviously, 1% is too many. And that's like a super conservative estimate. But when you have all of these millions of people imprisoned, we're not talking single digits here. We're talking a plethora of individuals that are wrongfully convicted. And it's not going to help by just using these character assassinations because then victims don't get true justice. There is no true justice or closure just because you put somebody in prison. Again, maybe they are a murderer. Maybe they're a known murderer. But that means another individual, if they're not the murderer of the, the particular of the particular victim they were accused of murdering and are in prison for, that means the real murderer is still out there. That means that particular victim did not get justice. You could argue the other victim that the person killed, if they killed them, if that's all proven and true and they got off on a technicality, whatever the case may be. You can argue in that instance there's there's some justice there, but in terms of the victim that they didn't kill that they're sitting in prison for, there's no justice there because the guilty party is still out there that could be harming other individuals. Now, you could argue that if this is a known murderer, now in the case of, let's say, Amanda Knox or Scott Peterson or even Casey Anthony, is there evidence that they killed other people or they would go on to kill more people if they weren't out? That's a little different. But in other cases where known murderers are convicted of people that are convicted of victims that they didn't actually kill, but they killed other victims, that these are all unique situations and need to be approached as such. But a lot of these high profile cases, like even OJ Simpson, has he gone on to kill a whole bunch of people since being released? Did he kill a whole bunch of people prior? And does that mean he's guilty or innocent? Again, this is why we have to default to the standard of beyond a reasonable doubt, because that is a very, very logical standard. Because you're basically making pretty damn sure you got the right guy instead of going off of these emotional responses to these people not being good people. And again, the tr in, in certain cases, again, let's not paint with a broad brush and make all these hasty generalization logical fallacies. I'm not saying all of these people convicted in the court of public opinion are innocent or that they're all guilty. Again, statistically, if you look across, we could say dozens and dozens of true crime cases where an individual was convicted on a character assassination, obviously just sheer statistics, some of them would have to be innocent, some of them would have to be guilty. In general, obviously, everything should be examined on a case-by-case -case basis, so we are generalizing a little bit here just for the sake of argument. It's not part of any definitive argument. So it's, uh, it's a self-admitted generalization, but statistically, a certain portion of character assassinations would be people who are innocent. And that number would only increase if these character assassinations are not specifically taking a stand against because you don't really see a whole lot of pushback. You see some. You see some people saying, oh, Amanda Knox is just awkward. That's a little different than saying, oh, yeah, she's a pathological liar, scumbag, psychopath, but she's innocent. Nobody's really saying that. I think I'm the only one that raise that possibility in my Amanda Knox uh, podcast. Normally, they're either Amanda Knox apologists who say, oh, she's just awkward and she's innocent, or the people that say, oh, she's she's a psychopath, she's evil, she definitely killed her or was involved in some capacity. There's no actual logical middle ground or alternative theory exploration. Similarly with Scott Peterson, is it possible he killed other people? Is it possible he was even planning to murder Lacey Peterson? but somebody beat him to it. Again, how convenient is it that there happens to be a robbery right across the street? Again, the coincidence theorists love to write all those things off as coincidence, but on Mindshock or anybody doing a scientific or logical examination of any of these cases, you cannot just play fairy tale fantasy pretend that a crime being committed within the vicinity of a person who ends up murdered is completely unrelated. Because there are there are burglaries gone wrong when people witness crimes sometimes they are murdered for witnessing the crime this like, this is not a revolutionary or mind shocking idea however much the coincidence theorists pretend that it's so extremely unlikely and obviously, even if it were unlikely, that doesn't mean it didn't happen in this particular case when you're examining a particular case you're examining that case you're not saying, oh, well, it's extremely, extremely unlikely to be struck by lightning. 
But if you're examining the case of the people that were struck by lightning, <laughs> if, you're, if you don't know if someone's lying or not, one of the individuals that was struck by lightning and you're examining the case, if you're being neutral, objective, and scientific, you can determine that they were struck, they were one of the few that were struck by lightning. So again, if you're really being objective, neutral, and scientific, and not emotional, you're going to follow the evidence wherever it leads, not use these appeal to probability logical fallacies. I actually just did a podcast on that. You can check that out on MindShock as well. MindShock is quickly becoming the one-stop shop for any kind of logical analysis or logical fallacy explanations that you can apply to anything, true crime cases, conspiracies, whatever you want. That's what makes logic so useful. And it's very, very telling when coincidence theorists and some of these scientism cultists like to pretend that uh, people shouldn't talk about logical fallacies or they're irrelevant. I mean, they're directly relevant to anybody seeking the truth because you're just seeing if your reasoning adheres to strict principles of validity. Is your line of reasoning valid or not? That's kind of important if truth is your goal. If your goal is just to emotionally vent and character assassinate people you've never met on the idiot box, regardless of whether your assessment of their character is accurate or not, because it could be accurate. But again, that doesn't mean they committed a particular crime in question. And I haven't heard this particular topic being talked about enough. I think it's very, very critical, particularly in the true crime community, in all of these online discussions, to clearly denote that someone could be a psychopath, a sociopath, an evil scumbag, one of the worst humans in history walking the planet, walking the earth. And they could still be innocent of a crime. There's plenty of those types of individuals walking around that actually never kill or assault anybody. Again, a lot of times these types of individuals are also cowardly. So they would not commit the crime. And for the last time for this podcast, do you really want the true murderers walking free and laughing at the commoners, at the sheeple, the cognitive dissonant lemmings who just make these jump to these impressions and conclusions based on limited and biased information they saw in the idiot box. So the true, the, so out of whatever the percentage, I'm not going to pretend to know the percentage, whatever percentage of character assassinations resulted in innocent people being convicted, whatever that percentage is, the true guilty parties are walking around laughing at how gullible and silly the people that believed that this innocent individual actually committed the crime that they committed. And they possibly went on to commit other crimes, which makes this whole travesty of character assassination and not adherence to the standard of beyond a reasonable doubt that much more tragic. Because how many more victims are out there when if the standard was followed, they other alternative lines of inquiry could be pursued. I mean, we see this in the Stephen Avery case as well. This is the last reference I'll make before I round out this short podcast. This reference in the Stephen Avery case, people think that he threw a cat in the fire, which isn't even true. That'll probably actually be my next Stephen Avery podcast because this is reiterated by the illogical goofball guilters who just, they really hate actual facts. Uh, obviously, an individual named as Yanda admitted to in writing and went to the police with his statement that he was the one that physically picked up the cat and threw it in the fire. And for, for making that statement, he got off scot-free while Stephen Avery was punished, which that seems to be how Manitowoc works over there. I mean, think about the insanity of that. Let's If you and your buddies are drunk, hanging around a fire, and you make whatever jokes, Stephen Avery might have made jokes, he might have said a lot of inappropriate things, he might have splashed some gasoline on an individual, but let's say you were the one that physically picked up the individual, let's say a human just for the sake of argument, and threw the human in the fire killing it, you go to the police station to admit this, in writing, you get off scot-free, but your buddy, who may or may not have made drunken statements, who may or may not have had splashed some gasoline, they're punished to the full extent of the law while you get off scot-free for picking up a living being and throwing it in a fire. That's how they roll in Manitowoc. But whatever percentage that these uh, corrupt law enforcement individuals and state officials, they got a certain percentage of people hoodwinked into believing that the, this whole investigation and prosecution of Stephen Avery was legitimate. But you see this kind of character assassination built on things that aren't even true. And that does a great disservice because Teresa Hallback, the alleged victim in this, if she's dead, again, we have some 
serious issue if we're being objective, logical, neutral, and scientific. A DNA result that cannot exclude someone is not the same thing as proving that was that someone, especially with switched labels and all of these things, the FBI taking on blind faith that the sample was what the sample was alleged to be. All of these problems with the Stephen Avery case, obviously, if you're not up to date with the Mind Shock Stephen Avery podcast series, make sure you check that out. That's one of our longest running series. More episodes coming up soon. And these kinds of character assassinations, the true perpetrators are out there. And they're still committing other crimes, possibly. And if they do, part of the blame should be shouldered by the individuals who did not adhere to the standard of beyond a reasonable doubt and just went on these emotional reactions based on their own subjective perceptions, which may or may not be true. But let's say it's true. Let's say Stephen Avery actually did pick up the cat and threw it in the fire. I mean, obviously, there's no actual evidence for that. But let's say he did that. How does that prove he killed Teresa Hallback or anybody else? There are people who kill animals that do not kill humans. Again, you're letting the real, if he's not the real perpetrator. Again, we're using the standard of beyond a reasonable doubt. Obviously, it's not even in the ballpark of that regarding the Stephen Avery case. You have more evidence for Ken Kratz committing this than you do Stephen Avery. But anyway... The problem is you don't know what the true perpetrator is doing after all of this. And then people tend to double down, of course, through all their cognitive biases and their egos got them on such short strings. They don't want to admit they were wrong because look what happened even directly to Stephen Avery. In the 85 Bernstein assault, Avery was convicted, even though obviously there was nowhere near beyond a reasonable doubt standard met. I mean, there were witnesses that placed him far away from the crime scene. Many, many witnesses. Even Penny Bernstein herself initially said that it was not Stephen Avery. Then through corrupt law enforcement pressure, the same corrupt law enforcement officials that uh, were involved in the Hallback frame up, they were also involved for his Bernstein frame up. And then Gregory Allen, the true perpetrator who DNA matched to, he was let off. I mean, again, coincidentally, the corrupt law enforcement were watching him, except for the for the for the 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 time span that he was to commit the crime. At that point, he was allowed to commit the crime. For some reason, surveillance was pulled off of him, allegedly. Other people believe that law enforcement actually witnessed the crime. They didn't care or whatever, whatever the reason may be. But they, uh, they, Gregory Allen actually did go on to assault other people. And who's going to shoulder the guilt for that? Because you're letting innocent, when you do character assassinations, because even in the 85 frame up, Avery was painted as he did have some priors. Uh, and of course, these get blown out of proportion. And, and some people take these uh, false rumors as actual legitimate charges and, and various na- things. Apparently, you know, as a, as a late teen, early 20s, he was involved with some shady criminal individuals and was involved in some robbery charges and things of that nature. And obviously, that's not the same thing as uh as assault and sexual assault and uh and murder i'm not even the same ballpark so yeah it's it's very telling when character assassinations result in guilty parties getting off scot-free and going on to commit other crimes and having other victims so i just really really wanted to address that and bring attention to the dangers of character assassinations instead of objective neutral logical analyses and strict adherence to the standard of beyond a reasonable doubt. Hope you guys enjoyed another edition of the Mind Shock Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, you can donate to our PayPal. Just check the link in the description. Everything helps us put out more podcast episodes and a variety of topics, always keeping logic and reason at the forefront. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Make sure you allow a device to have those notifications come through. You can share this podcast on multiple social media platforms and hit the like button. You can check us out, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Patreon. Patrons do get priority case topic, logical analysis, code podcaster requests. You could also be a guest on the podcast, depending on your tier. Questions, comments, theories, thoughts, suggestions, rebuttals, debunkings of any kind. Leave them in the comment section. This is Bruce McGuire signing off. Catch you guys next time.